Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Shiomara Castro leads Honduran presidential election. Nurses file United Nations appeal against TRIPS waiver obstacles. Indian Parliament passes bill to repeal farm laws. And Israeli President storms Hebron Mosque amid protests. In our first story, we go to Honduras, which held a historic presidential election on November 28th. With 51.1% votes counted, left-wing candidate Xiomara Castro has secured over 53.6% of the votes. In second place is Nasri Asfura from the ruling National Party with 33.8% of the votes. He is followed by Liberal Party member Yanni Rosenthal with a vote share of 9.2%. Over 5 million voters were eligible to elect the president, the Congress, mayors and councillors in Sunday's election. According to the Election Council, the voter turnout stood at over 68%. Shemara Castro is leading the presidential race by a margin of 20% and is poised to become the country's first female head of state. She belongs to the Liberty and Refoundation Party or the Libre Party and has pledged to form a government based on reconciliation, peace and justice. Her victory would bring an end to over 12 years of neoliberal and conservative rule in Honduras. The country's last progressive president and Castro's husband, Manuel Zelaya, was ousted in a US-backed coup in 2009. In the following year, the ruling National Party was accused of ties to corruption and organized crime. It also ran a polarizing campaign this year with a focus on anti-communist planks. Before the votes were even counted on Sunday, the National Party illegally tried to claim victory. After official results showed that Castro is in the lead, celebrations broke out at Libre Party headquarters. The party's platform addresses issues like resource extraction and exploitation, the human rights of marginalized groups, and more open and plural foreign relations. Over 2.5 million nurses have formally asked the United Nations to investigate countries blocking patent waivers for COVID-19 vaccines. 28 unions filed the appeal on November 29th as part of an initiative coordinated by Global Nurses United and Progressive International. It is addressed to the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Physical and Mental Health who has investigative authority under Human Rights Council. The letter condemns the European Union, the United Kingdom, Norway, Switzerland and Singapore for blocking the TRIPS waiver in a clear violation of the right to health. Global inequities in access have led to a vaccine apartheid wherein richer nations have hoarded at least 7 billion doses. Meanwhile, lower income countries have secured only around 300 million doses. While the global vaccination rate stands at around 42%, the figure for Africa and the Western Pacific is less than 1 in 10. At the same time, the global COVID death toll has nearly 5.2 million people, including at least 115,000 medical and healthcare workers. Rich countries have refused to meaningfully engage with patent waivers, despite warnings that low vaccine coverage could lead to more virus variants. Countries are instead opting for discriminatory travel bans as seen with the discovery of the Omicron variant this week. The World Trade Organization's ministerial meeting to discuss the TRIPS waiver has also been deferred. India has passed a bill to officially repeal the three farm laws which sparked the farmers' uprising. The Farm Laws Repeal Bill was passed in the lower house or Lok Sabha of the parliament within a record four minutes on November 29th. The body adjourned soon after, amid protests by opposition lawmakers. They rejected the lack of discussion on the bill, accusing the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party of avoiding a debate on farmers' issue. This included the demand for a minimum support price for produce and compensation for the families of farmers who died during the protest. The repeal bill was passed in the upper house or Rajya Sabha shortly after on Monday. Another key legislation that will now be discussed in parliament is the Electricity Amendment Bill. 
The withdrawal of this bill has been among the central demands of the farmer struggle. It has been rejected as an attempt by the government to privatize electricity production and distribution. The amendment will remove all cross subsidies under which higher end consumers pay more to subsidize lower electricity costs for poor and rural consumers. People will now have to pay the actual cost of supply which will be substantially higher for rural and remote areas. Farmers' organizations have argued that if passed, the amendment would lead to an increase of 500% in their cost of irrigation. And for our final story, we go to the city of Hebron in Palestine in the occupied West Bank. Palestinian activists gathered outside the Ibrahimi Mosque on November 28th to protest a visit by Israeli President Isaac Herzog. The planned visit to mark the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah was deemed a violation of the site by the Palestinian Authority. Other Palestinian groups rejected it as the occupation's attempt to create new facts on the ground and an attempt to Judaize Islamic and Christian holy sites. Israeli forces surrounded the Ibrahimi Mosque and forced the shutdown of Palestinian businesses in the area on Sunday. President Herzog then stormed the mosque accompanied by Israeli legislators and leaders of settler organizations. Meanwhile, Israeli occupation forces attacked Palestinian protesters at the site with tear gas and stun grenades. The Ibrahimi Mosque site was partitioned under the Wai River Accords of 1996. Palestinian Muslims retained control over a majority of the compound and Jewish people could enter the site for only 10 days in a year. This was two years after 29 Palestinian worshippers were massacred in the mosque by a Jewish settler, Baruch Goldstein. Palestinians have accused Israel of violating the Accords. An estimated 800 Israeli settlers live in illegal settlements in Hebron. Israel also maintains a heavy military presence outside the mosque site. Parts of the city's H2 area have also been declared as Jewish only. And that's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.